Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to part two of the fixing a floppy drive adventure. Here's our floppy drive again. So I've assembled it so I don't have to remember which screw goes where because I will certainly not remember that. But something uh, arrived in the mail. So usually I open it with my knife but I'm starting to more and more open it the way it's supposed to be opened. And this is especially true for those uh, paper envelopes. Because uh, they've got a little opening lid. So I ordered a lot of rubber bands. And hopefully uh, a matching one will be in here. They do appear to be a lot thicker than the original one. And I did search for a thickness. Let's measure the length of the original rubber band so that's around 105 millimeters thickness is around one millimeter or the width and the thickness is around 0.5 millimeters so 105 and one so let's open this first to see if we've got any matching rubber band because otherwise taking apart the floppy drive oh, is a bit useless. I think that we've got a match over here so let's grab my caliper again and measure this one the new one oh, and it's a little bit smaller but I think this uh, might work. Well, let's measure the thickness because this is not one millimeter, I think, or point, yeah, it's one millimeter thickness. I ordered them because the thickness was 0.5 millimeters. So yeah, well, nope, we're just going to open it and we'll see what happens. Let's remove this front cover and then we can remove the plates. There you go. Well, let's first try to see if this even fits. And I'm very afraid that it's just too thick. Because I've got the rubber bands that I used in the previous video. And that rubber band is basically the same thickness. So we'll see, but I'm afraid that it it's not going to work. Let's zoom you in again. So this very challenging job. That went uh, quite smooth actually. But I've still got the impression that it's rubbing against itself. Yeah, well, I guess we'll just uh, find it out if it's uh, rubbing against itself. Let's connect this uh, connector. Let's insert a floppy drive. I'm not expecting much actually. It's basically the same as the rubber band, so yeah. All right, here we go. Well, it's certainly rotating a lot faster. Oh, it's requesting me to format the drive. It's a lot slower now, I think, so. The speed thing does work. It's, it's really slow, so let's Eject it. And oh, 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 oh. Hey! Just waiting for the computer to open uh, the file. I'm not entirely sure if this rubber band is going to work because I think it's still slipping. Now, I think if I somehow can prevent the rubber band from slipping 
onto itself, then it might work. The motor is really hot. Maybe if we put a smaller rubber band in here, it will hopefully thin it itself once it gets uh, stretched out. But yeah, uh, I guess that will just uh, find. Oh, it's oh, it's twisted. Ooh. Somehow it got twisted. I think that that could also be a problem. Well, that's most certainly a problem. As we saw on the actual rubber band. So let's untwist this. Well, we can try it again with the untwisted uh, band. I think that we might have to add the capacitor that we broke in the first video. So it's a 476, which means 47 microfarads. So I've got that over here. Uh, and I guess that we'll need to remove the motor again. Because otherwise we can't solder to it. Put it back to C. How and where we can place that capacitor. Because it's a tiny area that we will have to fit it in. Uh, this is a Nishikon gold capacitor. I got from one of my previous... Uh, Amplifiers, which unfortunately all well, died. I think we should be able to just solder it and then we can bend the capacitor over if needed. I'm hoping that the 16 volt cap is enough. It probably is, but you never know for sure until you, until you turn it on. Ooh. That's the other one. Let's verify the solder joint. Yeah, that should do. Let's put the motor back in place. Well, that still fits, which is really nice. And I think that this will eventually bend away just enough for everything to fit, which is also nice. So now the final thing that we need to do is we need to install the drive belt again. Let's screw the motor back in place and... Give it a uh, test run with the uh, smaller belt and capacitor. Put in the floppy drive and press enter. Now I was hoping that it would pull through this. Well it didn't as you can see. I thought maybe the voltage um, is dropping and then that causes the motor to stop but it doesn't look like it. We had a 100 millimeter belt right now. So let's remove that because uh, this belt ain't working. I think that this belt is um, a little bit too small and then it puts a bit too much force on the uh, motor. Well, this is basically the same belt I think. I think the bottom one is slightly bigger. Yeah, this one is slightly bigger. Oh, let's try that one. And if this one doesn't work then I guess I'll have to uh, go back online to 
find some thinner belts because these are just too thick All right, so well, let's uh, let's have a try. No, I guess I'll have to search online for more belts. So, to be continued. Hey guys, this is Tim. I hope you liked that video. If you want to see more, please make sure to subscribe. Uh, you can also share the video with your friends and hit that like button. I'll see you in the next one.